What's going on, my friends? Uh, partway into uh, my upper body hypertrophy session for this week, my center pressing day, uh, just volume on vertical presses and uh, horizontal presses. And I thought I had a quick little uh, tip for you guys. Uh, the overarching tip, the broader takeaway, is uh, to not let the fact that there are people watching you uh, influence your decisions within training. Um, in a perfect world, assuming you're trying to maximize your results, uh, we have a plan that we can think of maybe a little bit more objectively uh, outside training. Don't deviate from that plan if the only reason is because people are watching. And there's a couple reasons people might do this. I have been guilty of this myself, uh, and I understand why. So if you work really hard and you get to be a three-plate bencher, uh, you're really proud of that. You know how much work you put in to become a three-plate bencher. Uh, you go to the gym and you almost want people to know every time you step in there, uh, you like look at them and you're like, they need to know that I'm a, a three-plate bencher, right? And I've done this at a couple of landmarks through my career, is forcing my working sets a little bit heavier than they need to be. That way I'm always above a certain number because I feel like I need to show uh, the work I've put in has paid off or whatever it is. Uh, it could just be a purely ego thing, right? And the other side of the coin, the opposite side of the coin is like, oh, it's embarrassing to use that little weight. I'm gonna fudge my form a little bit, just use a little bit more, because that's what I should be using, right? They're gonna, they're gonna, this is not what they think I should be using. Um, and it's like, I understand why, right? It's like a social setting. People are looking at you. You're worried about their perception of you. Um, but ultimately, if we want to be as good as we can be, we should be not making those decisions based on the fact that people are watching, right? Um, and eventually, if you stick with this long enough, uh, your boring work will still be impressive to the average person, right? Back when I first benched three plates, I always wanted people to see that I could bench three plates. So I would never back down far enough or every session I would include it in a hypertrophy phase when it wasn't doing anything for me other than just kind of solidifying my ego. Um, and, but eventually I got to the point where I'm strong enough now that I'm not too worried about it, right? Is if I go to a commercial gym, I'm sure whatever, even if it's a volume workout, people are going to find it moderately impressive. And that was the real goal is to get to the boring stuff, to be interesting. And the way to get there is to not deviate your plan because people are watching. If you do that, like once a week, that could certainly add up with time. And the more specific one, the one that made me think of this, right, is uh, today I did some banded pull-ups. Uh, I have always been pretty good at pull-ups when I was lighter. I did, like, I wouldn't say they were kipping at all, but they certainly weren't dead hang, um, like dead stop pull-ups. But I did a set of 30 when I was light and training for boxing. Uh, I got a little heavier and I never really trained them seriously. So uh, I'm aware that these weighted pull-ups aren't that good in the grand, like the standards of YouTube, but I'm reasonably proud of them. And I've always been pretty good at pull-ups. I think I got up to 90 pounds uh, for a set of six and 135 pounds for a set of three on neutral grip chest to bars. Um, and, and I thought that was pretty decent. Uh, even now I'm waking up probably 255, 260, uh, depending on how much weight I lost from moving. Um, and I can still do a set of 15, uh, I would say fairly clean, um, but not like dead stop, dead hang, probably dead stop, dead hang. We're looking between 10 to 12, which again, I, I take a lot of pride for being a heavier guy. I feel like that's still a pretty reasonable standard. Uh, and so I'll find myself really just my ego getting in the way. And it's like, realistically, I'm not trying to train to maximize today the strength in my upper back and the hypertrophy. I'm trying to maximize the hypertrophy and my proprioceptive control of my upper back because I find it helpful for developing my bench. So what do I need to do? I need to probably use a little bit lighter weight, focus on my muscular contractions a little bit more. Probably going to get a similar amount of hypertrophy between this or more of a moving weight style day. Uh, but as far as the role it plays in the bench press, uh, objective strength of your upper back isn't the most important thing in the world. It's control of your upper back that's potentially a lot more important. Uh, and so I want to train that quality if that's the point of this accessory. So I tossed a band up there and I did a few sets of 10 uh, with a band, which I could absolutely do with just my body weight, but it wouldn't accomplish the goal. But the only reason I would do it with my body weight is because my ego wouldn't let me adjust it, right? We're okay. This is kind of the issue with calisthenics is that they don't downscale indefinitely. You can upscale them by weighting them. Um, but for the most part, a lot of calisthenic exercises, the load's kind of this or up. Pull-ups is the one where it's really easy to make it lighter, right? We can just add a band, or if you're at a commercial gym, lots of commercial gyms have the assisted pull-up machine. So it's like, oh, my body weight is a little bit easier for sets of five, so I'll add weight. Uh, we're okay with manipulating the load on a calisthenics exercise, but it doesn't make sense to only do that in one direction if objectively probably we need a little bit less weight. 
um, to ideally do what we're trying to do, right? So it's like, it should be the same thing. If we're ready, if we like calisthenics motions and we're willing to manipulate the loading on them to kind of maximize our results, uh, the, that manipulation and loading should go both ways. And more, a lot of you, unless you're very, very proportionately strong, which I'm sure some of you are, right? And at one point in time, I would say, hey, I think I was plenty strong at that point in time where there's never really a practical training time when I would need assistance. Everything is going to be my body weight or greater. And I was in that category at once in, at one point in time, but now I'm not, right? And uh, I would go out on a limb and guess 75% of you guys, if not significantly more, are also in that boat where there are times where you're doing a pull-up and in a perfect world, the load is a little bit less than whatever you weigh. So uh, yeah, overarching tip, uh, you know, learn from my mistakes and don't let other people influence what you're putting on the bar, what motions you're doing. Don't skip a motion just because you think it looks stupid. Uh, you know, they can think you look stupid, but when you're like lifting big weights, It'll, it'll have all paid off, right? Who gives a shit if they think it looks goofy? Um, really shouldn't matter. So thank you guys for watching my video. Thought I would give you uh, this tidbit that I wish I could tell my younger self.